Kon Si Taramar was the ancient middle city of the southern kingdom of Thailand. Buddhism was accepted and practiced by a great number of people, and many Buddhists from all over Thailand made pilgrimages there. This part of the country is well known for the Great Pagoda, which contains the Buddha's tooth relic, and within time, would be the birthplace of a great master. On the 14th of October, 1951, in the province of Nakhon Si Tamara, Winai Laongsuan was born. He was born in Su and brought up in a practicing Buddhist family. As a young boy, he was taken regularly to a Buddhist temple by his parents, this being the first introduction to learning about the Lord Buddha's Dharma teachings. After completing his secondary school education, he went to Bangkok to study. Whilst living in the city, he became aware of the suffering and the confusion people undergo in the constant strive for material possessions and pleasurable experiences. Everything is impermanent. One is happy when desire is fulfilled. If desire remains unfulfilled, then one is unhappy. Everything is subject to change. These philosophical words came from a very wise monk named Ajahn Buddhadasa Bhikkhu. In 1970, Winai decided to change his way of life. He left Bangkok to go in search of the truth, devoting himself to an aesthetic and simple way of life, the life of a yogi. As a yogi, he retreated to the island of Koh Samet, where he could be next to nature, watching the waves on the ocean and admiring the splendor of the forest and the magnificence of the mountains. He studied many philosophies of the world and other religions, but he finally chose the way of the Lord Buddha. He trained himself thoroughly in difficult conditions sometimes practicing meditation alongside dead bodies, which he found in the forest or in caves. He ate very little, and he fasted often. His clothes and arms bowl were simply made. Traveling alone, he practiced the discipline of eight precepts and meditation, and was always happy to teach Dharma to anyone who came to visit him. He liked to practice in the silence of the wilderness, which made his mind strong and wise. He gained mental energy and rejoiced in finding increased peace of mind. During the last year of his reclusive yogi life, a vision appeared to him whilst he was meditating on a mountain. He saw an old man wearing robes and carrying a crystal ball. The old man spoke to him saying, Yantra, now is the time for you to take up the duty of sustaining Buddhism. The old man offered the young yogi the robes and crystal ball. When Winai reached out and received these in his hands, the vision faded 
and disappeared, leaving him with a feeling of immense rapture through his entire being. The four years he spent as a yogi paved his way in search of the noble truth. In 1974, Vinaya the yogi was ordained as a monk. He was given the name Amaro, which means the one who will never die. After studying the scriptures of Buddhism and serving his religious teachers, he traveled by foot around Thailand. Prajnayantra was very disciplined and undertook the practice of austerity. He slept out in the open or in the forest, his only shelter being a mosquito net and umbrella. And he ate only one meal a day directly from his arms bowl as he had been given, with no concern from the way it tasted. In each place he traveled through, there were many kinds of wildlife, including some very poisonous snakes. But these potentially dangerous creatures never harmed or attacked him. The main method of meditation he practiced was mindfulness with breathing, which helped to calm his mind and develop insight meditation. In his second year of monkhood, he was able to achieve deep concentration during meditation. He sat in one meditation position without moving for three days and three nights. In this state of concentration, he was able to clearly see the arising and the passing away of not only the body, but also feelings, thoughts, and the practice of Dharma. He contemplated on the suffering of all living things, being trapped in the cycle of birth and death. He became very moved and immensely inspired, just as if the compassionate love of the Lord Buddha had entered him. After this experience, he increased his practice and was regularly able to enter into a state of deep concentration for some days. At sunrise, he would walk to a peaceful place he knew up on a cliff, where he would meditate, using the sun as a focal point, welcoming in the new day. He compared the rising and the setting of the sun to the ever-changing phenomena in our lives. Prajnayantra frequently visited cemeteries where he saw many dead bodies this strange but useful practice kept him conscious of the fact that nothing is worth clinging to. The stillness there enabled him by way of contemplation and detachment to focus his mind to be stable and strong. He would constantly tell his disciples, where you most fear to tread, you must venture to go. Your fear comes from the illusion of attachment to the body, which we think belongs to us. When we think about death, our fear should decrease. And when we realize the non-self, both attachment and fear will stop. jungle at times. Many people came to see him, asking him to teach them Dharma and meditation. 
he dedicated himself to his practice so much that everyone including many other monks were impressed. The Dharma he spoke was for everybody. Young and old alike respected him as a teacher and for being very unique in his ways. Many monks came to study with him, but not all of them could follow the strict code of practice, he said. To stay with Prara Ajahn Yantra, one has to cultivate great patience. Sometimes he would take the monks and his followers on long walks over extremely tough terrain, often resulting in painfully blistered feet. They would walk in torrential rainstorms or in the sweltering heat of the day. They crossed rivers both deep and wide and climbed steep winding mountain trails. They would stay in places which were suitable for practicing meditation and afterwards would move on from village to village or from forest to forest. Simple daily tasks. Meditate in the morning. Then change your posture. Do some exercise. Eat as a set time. Eat moderately. Don't be overcome by greed. When alone, feel as with company. Speak carefully and do as you speak. Don't let an opportunity pass by without doing the right thing. Think before you do, but do not dwell on disappointment over things past. Be aware of the present and increase your effort. Be brave as a hero. Don't rave about the future. Love as a child would. When about to sleep, feel as if it's going to be your last. When awake, get up immediately, as if throwing off your old pair of shoes. In 1979, he made a pilgrimage to Burma, where he visited some important Buddhist shrines and pagodas. But during this trip, he was accused of being a spy and was put into jail. The experience of being held captive for four months in very primitive conditions helped to strengthen his mind even further. Having the hell-like suffering, problems and trouble within the prison made Praajan Yantra vow to put even more effort, time and energy into his practice in order to cut off the cycle of suffering he was undergoing. The intensity to which he practiced left a strong impression on his fellow prisoners and even impressed the guards. One night, whilst deep in meditation in the jail, he experienced the feeling that his body floated up into the sky and exploded into countless tiny particles. His mind was focused on one-pointedness and he felt free, light and bright. He felt a peace that he had never experienced before 
and finally having no doubt at all about the truth of the Buddha's teaching. He saw everything as a lesson in life, with things acting accordingly to their own nature. He had complete confidence in the Dharma and felt he could go anywhere without fear. After his release, he returned home to Thailand. During one of his gatherings, he told his disciples that the experience he had undergone was as if he had just emerged from water and he would dry off in time. In 1885, Pra Yantra established the Sunya Tharam Forest Monastery in Kanchanaburi province, which is now his main monastery in Thailand. A large number of people come every day, especially at the weekends, to observe precepts, self-discipline, practice meditation and to develop loving-kindness. Anyone who comes to the forest monastery always makes a great effort to practice Dharma and to help each other with a kind heart and learn how to forgive and let go so that peace and harmony can exist. From his overseas visits, an increasing number of foreigners come to the forest monastery. Lovely, lovely. About uh, Buddhist teaching. Lovely for Buddhist teaching. But I like to recommend more. Mm. Recommend the most important thing for Buddhist teaching. We try mm. to have duty rightly and try to purify our own mind. Mm. Have duty rightly and try to purify our own mind by development of mindfulness and development of wisdom. This thing is very important. And try to grow up. Try to grow up any virtues or all virtues, if we can, in our best. Virtues of loving kindness, virtues of compassionate love, virtues of patience, virtues of gratitude, virtues of gratitude. And try to do it more and more with our practice. Not only we get good idea, we must try to start to practice. Like a, we know loving kindness is good, but we never do in loving, in loving kindness. We must try to have loving kindness with giving. Try to do everything gently. Try to have gentle action, gentle speed gentle mind, and try to see every life as friend who shares suffering. And anything, if you can help, you should help. Anything, if we can help, we should help. I always say that helpfulness is the best quality of human being. And learn how to develop all mind. Usually, we cling so many things, and so many things come to disturb our mind. Most of the time we have suffering. We have not calmness enough. Particular. Most of people in the big city, not only also in Stockholm, Helsinki, or Copenhagen, or any parts of the world in the big city, people have a lot of stress, have a lot of tension come up here. 
and they all still have a lot of suffering. Even look like in our day, we develop a lot of our materials. Look like civilization period in our day. In this world, look like very civilized. But people still have a lot of suffer in the mind. That's why Buddhism is very useful for all of us. How we call this word is Dhamma. I always say that if we have Dhamma, we will find peace and happiness more and more. And Dhamma can help us to free from all suffering. Between April the 10th and the 24th in 1992, Pra Ajahn Yantra Amaro took about 300 monks and novices and some 400 lay followers on Tudong in the great Narasuan forest in Kanchanaburi. Tudong is the practice of austerity, referring to the shaking off of defilements or attachments. There are 13 ways to practice Tudong but for an example, we'll give just four of the following. One should eat one meal a day only. Eat directly from the arms bowl. Use only three robes. And one should only sleep outside. For this particular Tudong in 1992, Pra Ajahn Yantra Amaro emphasized the practice of forest dwelling. The route marched from one village to the next, covering 13 kilometers, sometimes 37 kilometers per day, sometimes walking on rolling hills, and sometimes crossing streams or climbing up craggy stones and high cliffs. Through sweat, hunger, and pain, each person learned to exert his or her utmost effort towards the fulfillment of the ideal practice in self-discipline. In the Lord Buddha's time, the Supreme Master of Dutanga, as praised by the Buddha himself, was Maha Kasapa. Maha Kasapa came closest to the Buddha in physical appearance. It is said that his feet resembled the Buddha's most. The Buddha once gave him his robe in exchange for the robe that Maha Kasapa offered to him as a sitting cloth. Maha Kasapa preferred to live in the Himalayas and returned only after the passing away of the Buddha in time to light the funeral pyre of the Lord. Maha Kasapa could be regarded as a successor to the Buddha, not only in the exchange of robes, but also in putting the Dharma on a sound footing even as it exists today. Prajan Yantra has a special love and reverence for the Maha Kasapa. On several occasions he recounted with joy the life stories of the Maha Arahant. And now he is following in the footsteps of the Lord Buddha and the great Arahant along the Dutanga line. Since 1992, Pra Ajanyantra has been traveling overseas to give talks and to teach meditation to various groups of people in many parts of the world. Three new overseas monasteries were established in Denmark, Australia and America.
Giving nourishes the world. It does not matter by whom or when that heals its sickness and painful hearts. Therefore, accumulate giving. When you give, give wholeheartedly, with willingness and sincerity. Be not narrow-minded, attached, demanding. Better to forget what we have given to others. Let's be courageous enough to make sacrifices.